realizing his presence within and without. That is why it is called realization, not attaining. That which is within us, we are not aware. We become aware of it through so many disciplines. Here the method is to remember him through chanting his name. And his chanting and our type, our accepting of chanting is different. <coughs> While chanting, after uh, he came to the heights and set up the ashram, he shared his experience through various articles and books. There he mentions, initially when we chant, some now here we are we will chanting. And we get habituated to the chanting. We start enjoying the chanting like the bhajan. We may not go deep into it. Slowly, you know, when we, we get habituated and we start enjoying the thrill of it. Then Papa introduces another dimension that we should always keep on reminding ourselves that we are chanting the name of one who is within us and who is making me to chant. This is the difference between the ordinary chanting and this chanting. That means we are trying to remember chanting to remember him who is within us and who is now making us to chant or talk or think or do. No other discipline. Papa emphatically declares that among the various disciplines, this, this is supposed to be the easy one. Easy one in the sense, easy one in, the, in putting us on the path. Because any time at any place, we can chant. It does not need any preconditions at all. So right from the moment we get up till we retire to bed, we try to remember him through chanting. Even when we are involved in various activities, it is not limited, you know, it is not limited to a particular time or a particular place. But right from the moment we get up till we retire to bed, because we are chanting the name of one who is within us. It was in 1920 when he was 36 years old. He was also a family man. He had a wife and child. He was involved in various professions. He started his own, what you call it as, textile business. When things started moving in a declining way and it came to a stage where he couldn't move further. Failure after failure after failure that was confronted by him. At home also he was not comfortable because his wife was always sick and she had orthodox views, he had progressive views. So he, was, he himself has written in his first book, In Quest of God, that he was passing through a terrible, stressful period and he, when he felt that he has exhausted all his resources, at that particular time, Gandhiji happened to pass through that area. Many of you might know that Gandhiji was a votary of Ramana. And he heard Ramana from Gandhiji at a distance. So he has returned. That was his first spiritual touch. And then he switched over to Kadar and started chanting, spinning also. Simultaneously, he was also going through texts written by great, great Mahatmas, 
So the Nama chanting was backed up with a sufficient mindset. So that because then he did not slip into a lip level ritualistic superficial level exercise. And he was chanting Ram, 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 Ram. And he started feeling peace. When he cried, you know, where is rest, where is peace? That's what he has written. He heard from within. He has mentioned it as a great void. Trust me, you will be free. First, when we read, two, three things were staring at us. What is meant by this great void? What is meant by this trust? Later on, we came to know that first we start with faith, but we have to graduate ourselves to the stage of trust. There is a slight difference between both. In trust, you know, we hand over everything. In faith, so long as it does not affect me, the faith continues. But when he said, trust me, when he heard intuitively from within, he had surrendered everything at his feet. And to keep, then he said, then suddenly he felt, he is totally free. And that feeling, which is called a blissful feeling. To sustain that, he started chanting. Meditated and chanted. It is not chanting and meditated. Because he was fully aware of the purpose for which the chanting is undertaken. And he was, he was blessed with the direction that he was chanting the name of one who is within and who is making him to chant. That means God was not separate him. God was not away from him. Whose presence he was not aware. But he was very clear that he is with it. We are, try we, are, we are trying to remember him so that we realize his presence with it. And then he was chanting Ram, 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 Ram. Attending to his duties. But uh, the word is this. Even the period ever so small, right from the moment he gets up till he retires, as much of time as possible, he was chanting. Ra, ra, ra. Suppose you are walking. Ra, ra. Nowadays we are doing Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. So then slowly, one friend came forward and he said, I will take over your sick unit. Normally, you and I will be very pleased if the God has helped me to tide over the situation. But Papa was very clear. That was a test by God to see whether he is still compromising to go back to the old life. He said, no, I want something that stays with me. This sort of relief, it comes and goes. I want that relief which stays with me. But still that friend, and he told the friend, if you invest anything, you will also be losing it. It's a sinking ship. But the friend said, don't worry, that is my responsibility. I will take over the administration finance, you take over, you handle the production. So, technically speaking, he was out of the problem. But still, his subservience to that higher power, and his conviction to remember him through chanting remained intact. Out of 24 hours, he was in a separate room, he was sleeping. He reduced his food to from 3 to 2, 2 to 1, and then one or so became only boiled potatoes without any spice. He was wearing only two clothes and cowpea. One upper one is, and go with that song. He was not lying down in the bed. He was using. Why, you know? He, the, then later on we understood. The, when we are used to certain comforts, the comforts occupy our mind space. 
and we do start everything from that com comfort space only. But then, now we are all, you know, whatever, warm clothing, everything is, not, is necessary. If this is not there, my chanting will not become sincere. But in his case, he knew that. So he was trying to deny everything, so that maximum space is given in the mind for garden operators. And with this, he was trying. And as he started to supplement, he was also drawing the needed inspiration from the great masters. Even Bhagavan Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Vivekananda, Swami Ramatirtha, books like Yoga Vasishta, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Light of Asia, New Testament, Gandhiji's entire literature, Young India and Ethical Religion. We feel, though it has not been explicitly mentioned, many of the expression of Gandhiji on God and the path he chose, it is almost finding a replication in Papa's life. Because he defined God as subtle and mysterious energy, power. And he was also chanting Ram, he was also chanting Ram. His Ram standard stood for the universal principle, the cosmic principle, the cosmic uh, uh, Brahman, Ratman, whatever we call it. And it was not limited to any particular form any particular uh, type of, any, any sort of a limitation, okay. So he was very clear, Gandhi was very clear. So with that background he started, so meditated and chanted. And then, as he was tasting the sweetness of this Ramana, in the form, in the form of his realizing that he is there within me, he is there within me, he is there within me. He is making me to chant. He has come in the form of the whole world. When he was moving towards the direction, out of 24 hours, 22 hours he was able to spend in chanting <coughs> with this bhavana. So the family became panicky. Something, I think, he has gone off the head. So they cut all brothers, everybody was informed. He must be taken to some hospital. He is indifferent to everything. So, but Papa did not compromise on anything, relent on anything. He was holding on to this. Nothing else mattered for him. Then his father, who was away, he was informed. He rushed up. He thought, you know, something is wrong with his son. But when he, the moment he saw him, he knew nothing was wrong with him. So he asked, what happened? Now, this word is very important for all of us. He said, God is making me to chant his name. Normally, our reaction will be, I'm chanting the name, no? But in such a short time, because of his intensity and the commitment to the idea to be saved, he started tasting that even the very act of chanting is prompted by the indwelling and all pervading reality. So the father knew he is on the right path. So he said, what are you chanting now? Ram, Ram. Come, sit. He took him inside the house and then made him to sit. One sannyasi met me and he volunteered to give me a mantra and told me that if I hold on to this name, I will get peace. So I will give it to you, you carry on with it, then you will also attain peace. Then he, the mantra is Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. So the, after that he was chanting Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Since he was a great uh, admirer of uh, Swami Ram Tirtha, you might, be, you might have heard about him. He is inspired by Swami Vivekananda. And Swami Ramtirtha had elaborately explained about the significance of Pranam Mantra, O. So he took that O also from there and added to this. So started from Ram, then Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, then O Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. 
later on he gave the meaning also om stands for the nameless formless reality sri stands for the reality which has got name and form all of us ram stands for both and beyond both j stands for victory so victory to that power victory to that reality who is without name and form who is with the name and form who is also both and beyond both this clarity had come and then he started chanting when chanting was going on with the right perspective and almost to become exclusive he had withdrawn himself from everything and got stabilized then he was prompted when you are with me always when you are running the whole universe and me in which i am also involved why should i not throw away this life to you it should be limiting myself to a particular place and particular setup he was prompted then then on 27th december 1922 when 1920 he started within 2 years he left everything that he had been thinking is over and threw himself out fling and he 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 himself has said fling yourself then only you know that you have surrendered him totally with nothing to have for back upon accepting him and him and him only and that the first leg of his journey god willed that he should go to a place called trichy you know and from there then we did not know whether to go to trichy or not he has written the first book is in question of god it's a beautiful narrative of his life and also a manual for our life so there he has mentioned when he reaches that particular place near to chishi sri rango suddenly he saw the holy river kaveri there are seven holy rivers in identified in indian faith ganga yamuna kaveri sindhu krishna narmada godavari so this uh, kaveri was just flowing suddenly he was prompted to offer his white clothes to come on to again offer clothes offered the name also his name was vital rao and he was prompted to give a name for himself das of ram ram das nothing traditional that is why you will not find any ananda or something like that no or saraswati or something so das of ram always he wanted to remember ram is inside and he has also blessed it as a sense of individuality we call it as you know the right ego functional ego so long as the body is embodied itself remains there will be a sense of individuality but that's a purified in sense that it has nothing to claim for anything it only becomes the now the words are being made to utter by him this we should know we cry we laugh we lose we gain behind everything not only this or that behind every every emotion every thought every action it is he and he alone and because since he has given me i should always be a subservient to him so that is why the hasa for him and then he went on a yatra right from the south to the extreme north like the way nothing to fall back upon nothing with him but everywhere he was able to find god events and normally when we react to events and individuals lot of mental tension anguish uncertainty insecurity so many things will come 
But in his case, every every incident that was coming in our language, many are positive in negative. But in his case, he was seeing everything as God's will. One example: he was traveling, no ticket, so he was traveling to Rameshwar. You have heard about Rameshwar. Rameshwar temple is there, no? So the ticket examiner came and asked him to get down because he 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 doesn't plan anything. Somebody will come and tell him you get into the train, and he will also be accompanied. He will be named as Sadhu Ram. That's all. So the Sadhu Ram and Papa was there. The ticket examiner said, "Without tickets, you cannot travel." So he made them to get down. So as soon as he got down, the Sadhu Ram was complaining. After all, we have about six miles to walk. Does he not know that we don't carry any money? And grumbling and complaints. <coughs> this is very important for all of us. This particular dialogue. <coughs> he said, "Don't blame. Ram has been kind enough. Normally, pilgrims are to be done on foot. He has taken up to this only six miles here to pass." He gives us the clue how to transform a so-called labeled negative incident to a positive one by bringing the dimension that he is behind everything. So the Nama chanting remembrance means every moment of our life, behind everything that is happening, he was trying to connect himself. And during all the past moments, there was nothing else excepting to meditate and chant his name, whether it is walking, whether it is sitting. There are many, many incidents. Time is running out, so we cannot explain. Where we find, you know, how does this Nama chanting, his faith in Nama, how does it help one to tackle all, transform everything into positive, everything into positive? Uh, one more incident, yes. In one station, that Ajmer, he was asked to get down. Because he had no time to take it, it was severest, severest cold winter, and he had nothing to cover also. So when we were sitting like this, the police came and said, "Don't sit here, go." Again, in another place, he said, "Go." So finally, he was pushed to a far off place in the platform where there was a tree. So he went and. Sat there, then chanting was going on. Then he laid himself on the floor. There he found the smell of urine. That was the place where people used to pass urine. You and I will immediately get up, you know. Immediately that particular word. Oh God, how kind you have been to place me here now, to know at what level I am. You have come in the form of the police and drove him to that direction, so that Ramdas will know to what direction he has been able to raise himself, and he had slept peacefully there. After reading that, you no, know, we keep on thinking about it. How do we understand something? So we all know we carry urine, stool, everything within us. No, so it is not a thing to be. Normally, we say, you know, I. Our aversion, but we are hardly recognize that we are carrying it. So, if if this attitude should be there, the attitude should also be here. So, God has blessed us with a body in which there are so many operations that are going on to to sustain that. So, when we eat or drink, whatever is needed for the body, for the bone, for the blood. And whatever is not needed by them, it is all pushed out in the form of stool and urine. So everything is going on. That reality he was able to so that there was no aversion, there was no complaint, there was nothing like that. What is inside? It is also outside. <laughs> so in every incident, you know, from the tiniest to the grossest, he was able to bring in, and he was only the only anchor was avalambanam. You see, you know. The only anchor was Nama. 
Nama, 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 Nama. Nothing else. It is not vocal chanting, no? mostly mental chanting. Vocal chanting initially, when somebody chants, Papa also dances with it. But later on, he has a, from his experience, he has suggested to all of us that mental chanting is far more effective than vocal chanting. Because you will not be a disturbance to others while walking. Somebody is attending something and we are passing through. We are waiting in the bus stand. Every time we can have. So if we try to train, graduate ourselves from the vocal chanting to the mental chanting level, it will can always be tried. What's in the way we can also say, Om Shri Ram, Shri Ram, Shri Ram. Just to make the mind up, hey, look here. You are riveted to this, riveted to this. You are, you are active because he is there within you. He, you are thinking, you are seeing, you are watching, you are hearing, you are tasting, you are touching, you are talking, all these things because he is within you. So this is sort of background was there while chatting. And so he recommended that the, it, is not, it is easy in the sense, it does not require any precondition. We don't have to have a bath, we don't have to sit this or that, we should have this particular dress or that. Because he is with us, you know. That clarity had come to him. No precondition is necessary. Because he is with us, he has been with us. And that is why he was free from all conditionings. And he was reveling in the place. And uh, yesterday we were telling, you know, what is that bliss? Objectless happiness. So normally we say happy, we are happy. It is related to either a person or an object or a situation. That is, uh, our de definition of happiness depends upon any of these three or all, the, all of them together. That is why it keeps coming and going. When the persons change, when the object changes, when the situation changes, it, the pendulum keeps on going and up. But here, he defined the bliss as objectless happiness. Absolute happiness itself. He doesn't say happiness, he says bliss. So Nama, he assures us that through Nama chanting, you will be able to enjoy this bliss and carry on with whatever field God has placed you. The very act of singing, the very act of playing the harmonium, the very act of playing the tabla, the very act of playing the flute, the very act of eating, the very act of cleaning, the very act of attending our professional duties, everywhere. If we can try to bring in this dimension, Papa says it will be possible because no, no field is taboo. No field is taboo. Because every field has been given by him. One does not have to run away from any field of acti activities. Only thing is we should know, instead of active voice, it should be passive voice. <laughs> I am talking, I am doing, I am thinking, I am no. I am made to think, I am made to talk, I am made to play, I am made to share. So if that is there, any field in which we are engaged is valid, is okay. So for all that, Remembrance. Easy way to remember him is to chant. So in the ashram, the mainstay is chanting. And uh, he has also added two more, seva and dhyan. Na, seva, dhyan. So all of us can try this. Right from the moment we get up, till we retire to bed. Whenever we get a past moment, Whatever name we are comfortable with. Whatever name we are comfortable with. Suppose we have been uh, worshipping Lord Krishna, Lord Narayana, Goddess Lakshmi, Muruga, Lord Shiva, Lord Ayyappa, whatever we life from childhood, our culture has slowly entered into us. We don't have to change. So, Previously, we were limited to that particular form. Through that form, it has entered into my mind. I develop my devotion to the form and then I chant. 
now one more dimension retain that but also think that he is within you and within everybody so whatever name we are comfortable with we don't have to change any name even when papa was approached by devotees to get initiation he would ask this question first what name you want any name is comfortable a people of different faith in foreign when even when foreign to he will ask them suppose if they want their name jesus name he will say yes you yes, take it so what is important is to remember that he is inside and he is making us to chant so in any name is we can adopt so this is what is going on with that background i request you to chant ram naam so that we all have that song. i pray to him from the deep from the heart that you kindly make me to chant your name as much as possible during the day with this bhavana अकेले नहीं हूं आप हमारा पास है 
So he started telling and then five times. So five seconds. At it. Go for washing your teeth, something like that. Taking bath, having food, going to office. Next to one hour, immediately close your eyes, repeat. When you go to the office, every one hour, you, you start. Nobody need to know that. You can go to the toilet if somebody is watching you. I am not a room, you are with me. I am not a room, you are with me. I am not a room, you are with me. I am not a room, you are with me. I am not a room, you are with me. But every hour. Then he said, slowly when you start reminding, every hour, with five seconds out of the streets of the system, slowly is entering into you and you become a part of your second nature. Then to support that, you will start chanting. This is how he introduced. Then you start chanting five times. Ra, 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 ra. Initially, when he said Ram, you know, that was also going, mind was going elsewhere. Now we know that to remember him, we are chanting. Or Navashiva, 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 Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. Five times. So these are all some of the ways by which how the Nama chanting does the digging into our heart, gets it to settle there, and makes us to think, talk, and do in the field which. God has given us. This also we wanted to share. Time is over. <laughs> Thank you, Swamiji, for such an inspirational discourse in the name of Sri Ram. Certainly deserves a round of applause. You may be wondering why I always say Jai Shara! <laughs> yes. Jai Shara! Swamiji has extended an invitation to ask questions. Uh, if you do have a question currently, I request you to ask, otherwise, you'll be left wondering why you didn't. Thank you very much. Yes. Hariyam okay. Swamiji, thank you so much. <laughs> Swamiji, you were mentioning uh, chanting the name and meditating. You sort of made a differentiation. Can you give some clarity on what you mean by the two? Right, right. Yes. You are right. Meditating means we are trying to think about the attributes, that what this Nama stands for. Gradually, Papa started revealing so many things which he had during these two months. The sound comes from the soundless base. When we say Om, oh, Shira, Yera, Yehera, this O and Shri, there is a gap about which we are not aware. So, when we start, meditation means it is coming from that. That which is lying dormant in us, latent in us, unexpressed, unmanifested, and the Nama is the expressed form. That is why Papa used to say Nama and Nami are one. But Nama and Nami are one because Nama comes from that base, which is all pervading. So that so this this along with the chanting is, is also going on. It is tough job for all of us because we have started only chanting. When we start remembering, then probably we may not chant at all. But here, his own words I would like to repeat. Ceaseless remembrance of God through chanting his name and meditating on his attribute was there right from the beginning. So we try to chant and at the same time feel that he is making us to chant. We, we, beyond that we cannot express. Each one has to try and find out. But it is the truth. It cannot be put in words. It is purely in the experiential realm, not in the intellectual realm. It is an experience that cannot be expressed in words. Suppose when we chant, Oh! So 
depending upon our mindset, we can choose any tune. So when we chant slow, slow tuning Ramana, uh, that is slow tuning Ramana, we will be able to properly try both this meditating on the theme and the theme itself and, and meditating on the theme and the expressed form of the theme in the form of Nama. The Nama stands for this theme, Nami. Who is, who is, who is prompting me, who is articulating, who is activating my entire me and, and the other with that bhavana. So this, if both goes together, even when we are walking, we are going to the office, we are going to even cooking, we are cleaning the vessels, we are uh, uh, cleaning the, uh, keeping up the household, whatever way we are involved, this along with that we will be able to carry on. If it is only chanting, probably the mind may go here and there. But the moment this uh, meditating and chanting takes place, to a very great extent, the mind will not feel that it is going out. And even it goes out, suppose we feel it is going out, then Papa says, where is it going? Do you think there is a place where he is not? So even the so-called distraction, labeled by us, is not a distraction. And he, he, he said, Don't try to destroy the thoughts, transform the thoughts. Why are you making me feel that uh, my mind is going outside? Take it. You made me to chant, you made me to meditate on this. Suddenly you took me to other fields where I have been closely associated or you made me to closely associate and made me feel that uh, mind is going outside. Why are you making to do that? The moment I start talking, Papa says, you have brought me to the picture. That is called transformation. So we, that means, you know, 100% insurance is there. <laughs> we don't have to think that it is going anywhere. The moment we feel it is going anywhere, immediately we, why are you making me to do that? You have brought him into the picture, no? That is what is needed by chanting. Handing over lock, stock and barrel of all our thoughts, words and deeds, no? Not a particular room, not this mantra room, not this ritual room, anything and everything. So if, if this commitment gets stronger and stronger and gets concretized, then there is nothing that is, there is not. So he, when he, when he said that, no, when, when we started reading and contemplating upon it, so we all feel the moment we start chanting, suddenly it may go to, uh, today morning we had been to, what is it? Pretoria, we had there, and on our way, we, there was a traffic jam. All those thoughts were, so these thoughts are, we, according to us, it is not God's thought, it is mundane thought. No? But when Papa's words come, nothing is mundane. That means you are separating, there is a field other than God's? No. When he says he is Antaryami, he is the uh, Sarvadharam, he is the Asapta, he is in everybody. When you keep on trying to hammer yourself, how can he be only limited to a particular place and particular this thing? Incident. So anything that is happening. For us, you know, we, we keep it as an ideal and try, start trying. So nothing, nothing will take us out. That much we can be sure. If it is taking out all that uh, we have to pray is, why are you making me feel that it is going out? Whereas even to go out, we need you, you know. <coughs> uh, and one more quotation, very, very interesting. Somebody wrote to him, Papa, you should pray to God to relieve me from this or some, you know. People will have a lot of problems, you know. There are four types of bhaktas. Artha, Artharthi, Jityasu, Nyani. When I am in trouble, I pray to him. The moment the trouble is over, he will be there where he is, I am there where I am. <laughs> and when I want more and more wealth, my position, my promotion, my this and that, then I pray to him. And when I get, again, I am back to myself. 
But jinyasa, these are all stages, nothing wrong in it. Then the third one is, I am praying and he is attached, he is giving, he is not giving. But I am praying, you know, that means I accept that he is a higher power. What is that higher power? Jinyasa, you know. And then finally, finally he becomes Jnani Parma. So the even, so in, in anything and everything, later on we will start realizing, oh, it is he, 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 he made me to lose, this year he made me to gain. His, his calculation. And as we keep on advancing, many of his teachings become clearer and clearer to us. He says, go to your own source. If again the mind is, you know, our intellect will not keep quiet. If the internet keeps on tormenting you, what is it? The Nama chanting and this way. Suppose I don't have sufficient faith and trust in him. Then also Papa says, don't worry, you go to your source, where from you have come. And finally you will understand that you have come from him. In Bhagavad Gita he says, you know, Bijam Maam Sarva Bhutana. I am the eternal seed of everything. Normally we feel we have come from our parents. But parents have come from their parents. They have come from their parents. Where from they started? Who God started? Whose name I am chanting? To remember. I have forgotten. I feel I am this. So to remember that chanting. So in putting it in any way, easiest way is to remember him through chanting. That is the mainstay of Ashram. Any name we are comfortable with. So there in Ashram, as Puja Swamiji was telling, Papa and Mataji, they set up this Ashram. Absolutely, from the day one, even today the legacy by their grace is going on. Nothing would be planned, nothing would be initiated, nothing would be mobilized, but everything goes on as if the planning takes place, as if everything is taking place according to our usual mundane structures. Because Papa says, God arranges all things in His own way at the time He appoints. So that means, the sense of individuality does not have to break its head. Anything and everything that is happening only by His will. But I should reach that stage, you know. Until I reach that stage, many people ask Papa, okay, you do planning put a comma and subject to his will. I want to come to uh, this program, satsang. Planning is necessary, you know. You have to plan well ahead, get into the vehicle, one hour before traffic, you know. You have to do the planning. But always put a comma, subject to his will. We left uh, uh, Pretoria, uh, Dilip Bhai's house at 1 o'clock. But reached Swamiji's ashram only by 3.30. Big! Uh, traffic jam. So it, it can happen. Normally, at the time of starting, we asked how much time? Hardly 55 minutes or one hour. But he has got his own calculations, comma. So we will not get disappointed. We will not become upset. Subject to his will. Subject to his will. So Papa said, okay, okay, you do planning. Planning is also done by him, don't worry. But re to remember that, you put a comma and say, subject to his will. Uh, we are planning to go on 25th back or tomorrow, day after tomorrow to Durban. Always we should know, comma, subject to his will. <laughs> we are allowed by him to do the planning, but we should know he has allowed us to plan. It is not the individual who is planning. So this is the basis. You know, how does this Nama enters into us and keeps us floating on that sir, blissful state? And so Papa, Mataji, they started. And they Mainstay is Ramana. And whenever somebody asks anything, Papa used to share. Luckily, he wrote four books directly. In quest of God, at the feet of God, in the vision of God, world is God. <coughs> These are the four books written by him. And then, during his satsang, somebody was kind enough to jot down and bring it out in the form of God experience one and two. When he was requested to go to abroad six, seven months, then the five volumes of Ramdas, lectures of Swami Ramdas, like that, so many have come, in which he has revealed these so many items. So in one letter he said, I was about to, 
somebody pray to him, no? Uh, Papa, pray to God. If you think, this is also a, a, a very, very thought-provoking statement. If you think that God can talk through Ramdas, he can talk through you as well. Because you cannot accuse him of partiality. Switch on your wire for direct communication. Why do you deny him in your heart? <coughs> Very powerful statement. If you think God can talk through Ramdas, he can talk through you as well. Because you cannot accuse him of partiality. He is there in entirety and perfection in anything and everything that we see. So, switch on your wire for direct communication. And this Nama chanting is the direct STD. Switch on your wire for direct communication. Why do you deny him in your heart? You deny that is why you are praying, you know. All that you have to feel, you are sitting here. Why don't you make me feel that you are? And you can talk to him, you can praise him in any language you feel. Papa says there is no protocol, there is no formality. Just like we, we, when we were children, you know how we were approaching our mother. No? We are free, the mother can understand our language. It need not be grammatically correct. Mother can understand our language. So similarly, who is within us, he can understand our language. It doesn't have to follow a certain system. So all these get zero to this remembering through chanting, remembering through chanting, remembering through chanting, right from the moment we get up till we retire. Right? So today he is prompting us, as we were coming, we were asking Swami, what is to be shared with us? He said, talk about Ram, the Mahima of Nama. The more, every time when we keep on hearing about the Mahima of Nama, the glories of Nama. Our faith will get more and more concretized. And here is a proof, you know. Not only Papa, there are many, many, many Mahatmas, Bhaktotamas, who have scaled the heights through Nama only. So let us all pray. You made us to dwell on these aspects. It is easy in the sense, it can be taken up at any time, at any place, it doesn't require any precondition. No brothers, nothing like that. But very difficult for us to continue because still we have separated you. We have not accepted you as an indwelling reality. So kindly bless us that you are there with me and you are making me to chant. And with that bhavana, let us try you bless us so that we we try to remember you as much as possible in the beginning. Especially when you make us to go through plus and, uh, the ups and downs. Morning you make us to ha become happy. Evening, you know, some other thing comes, we become unhappy, you know. So in both these, you know, I should be able to remember that you are causing this for my own benefit. So Papa used to say, whatever is happening is happening only by his will. And whatever is happening is happening only for my ultimate good. If this has to get firmly grounded in me. I must remember you always. And you have given me the holy and all-powerful Ramana. Please bless me to chant it and also to chant it with the right mindset. I think that is enough. 8.30. Thank you, Sri Anand for asking that question. And certainly, thank you, Swamiji, for responding. I'm going to allow one more question, uh, not at the back. Anybody that would like to ask something, as I said earlier, this is your opportunity. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> there are no takers. Uh, excuse me. May we request you to please sing Vaishnava Jaraku? <laughs> as much as I sing at the Hidwara Kara Bhagavan, right above that person is Vishnu. <laughs> there, Narsi Nataji brings Nama out to Ramna. Vaishnava Jaya Tho Tehna Rikha 
Oh, 